Hello coders! Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. This is lesson number 10 where we're going to work with an LCD display. So this is going to be the first video where we'll be using libraries in our Arduino code. Libraries allow us to access code that's already been written to interact with certain peripherals and devices without us having to rewrite or understand all of that code. We'll talk a little bit about how we can do this in the web interface. And if you're curious about how to do libraries in another IDE, you can check the description of the video. So in order to complete this lesson, you're going to need a 16 by 2 LCD display screen. Looks something like this. And you're going to want one that has an I2C chip already soldered onto it. This I2C chip is key in terms of making this a beginner-friendly programming and wiring setup. As if we have no I2C chip, we have to use a full 16-pin wiring diagram, and the code is a little bit more complicated to write as well. So we're looking for one that has this I2C chip. Ideally, if you're doing these videos, you already have the kit that we put together, and it already has an LCD with the I2C chip on it. Now that we have the right hardware, let's have a look at how we're going to wire it up. It's a pretty straightforward wiring diagram. You can see it here behind me. If you look at the LCD screen with the four pins over here, they go ground, voltage, data, and clock. So the ground pin is going to connect directly to the ground of our Arduino. The voltage is going to connect directly to the 5 volt on our Arduino. The data pin is going to connect to this pin A4. Clock is going to connect to this pin A5. These are analog input pins and they allow for a different type of communication than the typical pins that we set up. That's all for the wiring for this LCD display. Let's jump over to the code and see if we can figure out this whole library thing. All right, so here I am in the coding interface with a blank file called Lesson 10. So I'm just going to make a quick comment here. So lesson number 10, where we're going to be using an LCD display screen. Before we do anything else, we need to discuss libraries. I'm going to show you how to use it in the web interface, and I'm going to include some links in the description of the video that talk about the Arduino IDE, as well as using uh, a Chrome extension like Chrome Arduino 2. In the web interface, over on the left-hand side, we can find the tab for libraries. If we click on that, it's going to bring up uh, a searching menu where we can search the different libraries that are available on the Arduino software. We're just going to search for the word liquid and the word liquid is going to bring me three libraries liquid crystal liquid crystal and liquid crystal i2c so remember i said we want to use an lcd display that has an i2c chip on it so this is the library we're going to want to use so we can click on include okay that's all we need to do for this in order to get this into our code so i close out of that and i look at my code and i'll see that it added in a couple of lines of code it added a comment that says liquid crystal i2c version latest and then it added this hashtag include, and then triangle brackets, liquid crystal underscore I2C dot H. This is allowing my code to access the stuff that's inside of that library. Now, we don't need to go digging through that library to figure out how to use it. You can Google the libraries and learn a bit how to use them. But honestly, a lot of times we look at other people's examples in code to see how they use the library to help us decide how we can use it in our code. Now that we've got the library included, we're ready to start the actual code we're going to use in our program. We're going to start just above our setup function, where we're going to have to set up a field variable that we're going to use throughout the code that references our LCD screen. It's going to look like this. So we have liquid crystal underscore I2C, same as the library we included, LCD lowercase, and then in brackets, three parameters, 0, x27, 20, and 4. And this is the code given to us by the people who created the library for when we want to initialize a 16 by 2 line LCD screen using the I2C chip. So this line is going to get us set up for using it. Now let's jump into our setup function where we're going to initialize our screen. It looks like this, lcd.init, double brackets, and a semicolon. So now that we have it initialized, what we're going to do is we're going to first print a message on the top line of our LCD screen. In order to do this, the first thing we're going to do is turn the backlight on. We do this using the lcd.backlight method. Next, we're going to set the cursor of where we want to start writing to the upper left-hand position. So I do an lcd.setCursor with a capital C, 1, 0. This references the first row and 0 putting us at the very beginning of that first row of the LCD screen. Next, we're going to print some actual text or a string 
out to the LCD screen using the print method. So this code is in our setup function, which means it's only gonna run one time, it's gonna print that out to the LCD screen, and then it's gonna remain displayed on the screen. So let's push this code out and let's see what happens. What we see is that the top line of the LCD now displays hello world. So you can imagine some of the changes that you could make involving where you start the initial cursor. Do you start it in the first row or the second row in terms of what you want to print out to the screen? Uh, you can change that up in terms of how many characters do you have? How is that going to display? There's a lot you can play around with. We didn't use the loop function at all this time around because we were just trying to print that single message out to the screen. You can definitely do things with the loop function as well, depending on what you're trying to do. There's also some really neat methods within the library we haven't used yet, such as the scroll display left and the scroll display right methods that you can call on your LCD as well. Now that we're done with the base code, let's head over to the extension and see what else we could do with this. For the extension of lesson 10, I want you to change it from saying hello world to saying your first name on the first line and your second name on the bottom line of the LCD display. So this will help us make use of the cursor method, the set cursor method, to make sure we know what position we're in before we print something to the screen. Still don't need to worry about the loop yet, but I think it'll work as a good extension to make sure we know how to write values out to the LCD display. For the challenge in lesson number 10, I want you to get into the loop function, and I want you to see if you can dig out those LCD scroll methods scroll display left or scroll display right and I want you to see if you can put a message on the screen and I want you to see if you can print a message onto the screen either the first line or the bottom line or both and then have that message scroll like a scrolling marquee across your LCD display. That's it for the challenge and the extensions on lesson number 10. We hope to see you back for lesson number 11. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our tutorial series. Have a great day.